Revelation chapter number 3, the Bible says in verse 14, not unfamiliar to your hearing, says this, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless your holy name. Lord, we thank you from the depths of our soul for your goodness. God, if it wasn't for your goodness, we'd all be in hell. Lord, if it wasn't for your goodness, you'd be justified for throwing us off into hell for things that we have said or done or acted upon even since we've been born again. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, your long-suffering. We thank you, Lord, for being the great God of grace. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd help us I pray you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. I pray you'd bind the wicked one himself. God, I pray that, Lord, you would speak to our hearts. Now, Lord, I know as I stand here today that, Lord, your people have been under attack. I realize many of them uh, have been distressed. There are some who are dealing with disease. There are some who uh, are overwhelmed by great obstacles that have been thrown in their life. Uh, Lord, uh, I am fearful that we've allowed these things uh, to take precedence in our hearts over you. Therefore, Lord, we're not where we should be with you. So I pray for the next few minutes, Lord, you'd certainly show pity and mercy upon those that are struggling, those that are facing grave things. But I also pray that you'd speak to our stony hearts. Lord, I pray that the sweet Holy Ghost of God would administer comfort and conviction. God, I pray your people would do business with God today. Lord, in a crowd this size, there may be some, and Brother Josh has already prayed for, there's somebody that's lost without God. I pray they'd be born again. God, but I'm interested in your people this morning. Lord, I know if your people get revived, as a result, sinners will get saved. God, I pray for revival. Lord, I pray you'd continue to bless down there at Cannon Mountain. Lord, they've reached a crossroads this week. Give Brother Jeffrey wisdom. Help that dear church. God, I pray for Miss Crystal in the hospital. Lord, I pray you'd touch her. I pray that, Lord, what she's going through right now will add many years to her life. Lord, she'll not only be blessed to raise her children, but also see her grandchildren. Lord, I pray... Lord, for Miss Sonny, you would touch her and help her through the surgery tomorrow. May it improve her quality of life. God, I pray you'd help her. Lord, I pray for those that are still traveling or those that are providentially hindered. God, you'd be with them and bless them. I pray for Miss Tammy's family as they lay to rest her aunt on Wednesday. I pray for her family. You'd do work in that family. But God, I'm interested in the family of God here this morning. Father, help us. Uh, Lord, in your wrath, remember mercy. But God, speak to our hearts. Show us, God, uh, where we were when you saved us. Show us, God, uh, where we're going to be one of these days when you deliver us. But God, show us where we are today 
and where you desire for us to be. And Father, we'll bless you and praise you for all that you do. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things in this text. I want you to notice the sentence. We find in verse number 14, uh, the Bible says, Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. Let me stop right there. A lot of people like to spiritualize things. Uh, they like to say that we are living in the Laodicean church age. Uh, well, there are a lot of things going on in this age that uh, uh, certainly resembles what uh, John was inspired to pin down, but there was a literal church uh, in Laodicea some 2,000 years ago, uh, and when he says, write to the angel of the church, uh, the angel's the minister, uh, he's talking about write to the pastor uh, of the church of Laodicea. Notice uh, who is the one that is given the instructions. Uh, he says unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, uh, these things saith the amen, uh, the faithful and true witness, uh, the beginning of the creation of God. That's Jesus himself uh, speaking to John, uh, telling John to pin down uh, and write this to the minister of the church of the Laodiceans. Uh, they need to hear something. Now what is the sentence? Uh, look what Jesus says. Uh, I know thy works. That ought to absolutely uh, cause each and every one of us uh, in the gable end of our soul uh, uh, to shudder before God today. Uh, God knows our works. Uh, he knows our downsitting, our uprising, uh, knows the number of the hairs on our head, uh, knows the intents of our thoughts and the intents of our heart. Uh, uh, he knows where you were yesterday. Uh, he even knows where you be tomorrow. Uh, he knows where you sit right now. Uh, he knows what you said this week. Uh, he knows what you've done this week. Uh, he he knows where you've been. Hey, he knows our works. Uh, listen, you can fool the preacher. You can fool the deacons. Uh, you can fool the brethren. Uh, but you can't fool God. Uh, he said, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Uh, the sentence of the church is, uh, this Laodicean church uh, uh, they weren't hot and they weren't cold. Can I say we got a great church? But as we sit here today, we're not hot. We're not on fire. Thank God we're not, we're not cold. We're still warm and friendly. But we're not where God wants us to be. We see the sentence. Notice the sickness in verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I, the Lord, will spew thee out of my mouth. The Lord says, uh, knowing what he'd done for them, knowing what he'd saved them from, knowing how he had blessed them, uh, knowing all that he had prepared for them and what he would do for them, uh, but because they were lukewarm, uh, they weren't cold uh, and they weren't hot. Uh, they were just kind of riding the waves, uh, just lukewarm. Uh, he said, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Uh, he says, the very sight uh, of your lukewarmness uh, makes me want to regurgitate uh, uh, because uh, you're not where you should be. Listen, I want to please the Lord. I don't want him to get sick at my sight. But I shudder to think there have been many days that I've been lukewarm. There's been many days I have not pleased the Lord. There has been many days the Lord has gotten sick at the sight of me. How about you this morning? We see the sentence. We see the sickness. Here's the whole reason. Look at their self-satisfaction in verse 17. This is why he wants to spew them out of his mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, uh, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, uh, and naked. Uh, this morning, uh, you came to church. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, 
Thank you for being obedient to the Word of God. The Word of God says not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. So much more as you see the day approaching. What day? His imminent return. Uh, by the way, if you can't look around and see that he's not uh, uh, coming, you've got a problem. Uh, he's coming, uh, and he's coming soon. Uh, uh, but the Lord says, uh, 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 I've seen uh, uh, what has caused you to be lukewarm. Uh, uh, you came to church today. Uh, you're thinking I'm a church member. Uh, I'm baptized. I've been faithful to come to church. I give a tithe. I give a mission offering. I, I, I haven't been ill to my neighbor. I haven't done anything immoral. I'm doing okay. Everything's good in my life. But you haven't looked at it through God's eyes. We've drifted in and we'll drift out. We haven't done business with God. When was the last time you grabbed the horns of the altar and you stayed there to God? moved in your soul. Uh, when was the last time you lost sleep uh, over sinners dying and going to hell? Uh, when was the last time you prayed for your church family uh, until you couldn't pray no more? Uh, when was the last time you held up the man of uh, God's hands like Aaron and her uh, and asked God to bring victory? Uh, when was the last time uh, you truly prayed uh, for revival that goes beyond seven weeks uh, and uh, multitudes get saved? Uh, you see, we just drift in. We haven't done business with God. And to be honest with you, most people didn't show up expecting God to do anything today. Mm. Youth choir love you. But that was about as bad a singing as you've ever done. You sang the words, but you didn't sing them from your heart. You didn't sing out. Huh? Congregation, maybe they didn't sing out because you wasn't in any position to listen to them sing. Mm. I can't remember a time in a song service when nobody came to the altar. But we heard two good songs from the youth choir. We heard a good special song all about the goodness of God. And nobody moved. Could it be that we have the thought, I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing? We don't know how wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked we really are. Now notice the solution. Verse number 18. He said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see, as many as I love I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Notice the Lord instructs, counsels, to buy of him, let me ask you a question. Who's got enough money to buy anything from God? How do we buy something from God? See, that's the natural man thinking. And while I read that, the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, there are some of them that aren't going to get what you're saying. You know how I know that? Because you hadn't got anything else I've been preaching for the last month. To buy of the Lord is best defined by the Scriptures. You've heard me say many times, the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. Matter of fact, if you look this up in many commentaries, they have no idea what it means. Can I say Isaiah 55, 1 says this, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy, and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Uh, how can we buy without money? 
How can we buy without price? Uh, uh, my dear friends, it's defined there in Isaiah 51. Uh, uh, to buy of the Lord means to come to Him uh, by faith. Uh, when you come to the Lord uh, and you trust in His mercy uh, and you throw yourself uh, uh, before Him with nothing but a tattered garment uh, and ask the Lord to do for you what you cannot do for yourself, uh, a friend you'll find uh, uh, he will make you rich. Uh, he will clothe you. Uh, he will do for you uh, uh, things that you can't dream of. Uh, when he bids us to buy of him or to come to him by faith, to buy of him gold, gold is righteousness by faith. You can't be robed in his righteousness without faith. You can't have the righteousness of God dawning on you without faith because without faith it's impossible to please Him. He tells us to be rich, that thou mayest be rich. What that means to means to be enriched. You know how we're enriched? The presence of God in our lives. The touch of God in our lives. He tells us uh, white raiment. White raiment represents holiness in our life and holiness in our heart. We can't have either without faith. And then he says, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve. This is for that crowd that hadn't got it for the last month. When we come to him by faith, he anoints our eyes with eye salve. What does that mean? He gives us discernment. So you know when it's God's voice. So you know when it's you. When the preaching's going on. Oh, somebody's about to faint. I've got to get in somebody's crawl right here. Uh, uh. Brother Aiden, I appreciate you. You look sharp in that purple today. Brother Adrian approves. It's his favorite color. Uh, can I say this? There's some people just don't believe the Bible. They say they believe it, but they just don't believe it applies to them because they pick and choose what they want to do. They need their eyes anointed with eye salve. Hmm? They need to understand when God says, Thus shalt thou do, you better do it. When He says, Thou shalt not, you better not. And by the way, God doesn't approve of us making up our own rules. He's done give us His Word. Huh? Uh, that didn't help anybody, but it helped me, all right? But then He also says, in the solution to repent. As many as I love, verse 19, I chasten, I rebuke and chasten. Listen, when the Lord rebukes us, it's because He loves us. When I rebuked my children and told them not to do things, it wasn't because I was an evil taskmaster, it was because I loved them. And I could see a little bit farther down the road than they could because I've been down the road longer than they have. And I wanted to help them and instruct them. And when they didn't do as I told them to do, they got chastened. I chastened them because I loved them. I didn't chasten them because I didn't have anything better to do. I did not want them uh, to be disobedient and go down that road. And when they were, I, I corrected them. Uh, 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 didn't do too bad of a job, all three of them in church this morning, huh? But can I say, uh, you can chase them. It don't mean they're going to end up in church. God's just uh, blessed uh, Miss Annette's prayers. That's what I'm going to tell you right there. Uh, but the Lord, uh, He rebukes us because He loves us. Uh, he can see tomorrow. Uh, he can see around the next bend of the road. Uh, he can see the direction we're headed. Uh, some of us are drifting away from Him, uh, and we need to get back to Him. Uh, and He chastens us. Uh, he allows a little troubled waters in our lives uh, uh, to get us uh, uh, floating in the right direction back to Him. Uh, and He said this, uh, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Uh, here's our part. Uh, he's rebuking. Uh, he's chasing. Uh, he says, Be zealous. He said, Don't put it off. Uh, don't wait any longer. Uh, run to this next point. Uh, be zealous uh, and repent. Uh, that means turn from the way you're headed uh, and turn back to God uh, and allow God uh, to have His way in your life. Uh, for the next few minutes, I want to preach on this thought. How to know you're lukewarm. 
I don't know you're lukewarm. If I'm lukewarm, I want to know it. Uh, I don't want to displease God. How do you know you're lukewarm? First of all, you know you're lukewarm when sin doesn't appall you. When sin no longer bothers you, you're lukewarm. When uh, uh, you can uh, uh, be around sin and not feel dirty, you're lukewarm. When you can watch sin and it not bother you, you're lukewarm. Uh, uh, if uh, uh, the pride month doesn't bother you, God resisted the proud but gave grace to the humble. Uh, listen, God hates pride. That's one of the things He hates. Hmm? Uh, by the way, the rainbow don't buy, uh, b belong to the uh, very, very minor majority that's trying to make out a, a, a big deal about it this month. The rainbow uh, was a sign given to Noah uh, that the Lord wasn't going to destroy the earth by water anymore, uh, but He is going to burn her up. Uh, and if that uh, rainbow crowd today doesn't get born again, they're going to get burned up in a lake of fire too. Can I say, if sin doesn't absolutely grotesque you, you're lukewarm. Sin ought to bother us. Uh, for him to know it to do good and do it not, to him and his sin. Uh, let me say that again. For him to know it to do good and do it not, to him and his sin. How many of you have heard for the last uh, uh, four or five months, we got revival meeting come up next week? If you're not here and it's, you're not here because you're providentially hindered, then you're, you're in sin. Because we know to do good. To do good is being the house of God. Nah. You say, well, I came on Sunday. Good. Well, you know, when I go to eat dinner, they bring me crackers with my salad before my entree, before my dessert. I just don't eat the cracker. I'm going to get it all. Mm. Miss Crystal's providentially hindered. She's in the hospital. You won't be. Some of you hadn't even made plans to be here every night. You ought to be chomping at the bit. Mm. Anything that is not of faith is sin. You worrying about something, you're sinful before God. I'm worried whether or not I can pay my bills this month. Has God ever let a month go by and didn't pay your bills? Huh? If He did, it's because you wasn't tithing or living right. If you live by the Bible and you do what God says, God will take care of you. Uh, well, I'm worried. I don't want to shake Brother Ray's hand. I might get sick. You know what the Bible says is not what goes in the body that defiles, or goes in the mouth that defiles the body. It's what comes out. I got news for you. You can get sick without shaking Brother Ray's hand. Rather than me sit around and worry whether or not I'm going to get sick, I'm just going to trust God. He's a bigger God than me. If I'm going to get sick by shaking the colonel's hand, well, good, what a blessing. We'll have something more in common. Uh, but you'd be amazed what people worry about. Well, I'm going to worry about driving on the highway. They drive so fast. Well, there's back roads. I don't drive at night, but you'll go to Walmart. See, all those are excuses, but God knows our works. Oh, I've got to get off this point. You know you're lukewarm when sin doesn't appall you. Boy, I could spend a lot of time on that worrying, but I can't. You know you become lukewarm when serving the Lord doesn't delight you. When it becomes a chore. You remember Wednesday night when I asked you boys if you mowed grass? None of you seemed too excited about it. Lucas, you went. 
told me that was a chore. I don't think you get up every day and say, Dad, did the grass grow? Can I go out there and mow it? Huh? Well, you're weird. That's, that's another message. No! You don't get excited about that. I saw it in your eyes. How many times does he have to tell you when it's knee high? Lucas, go mow the grass. Yeah. You don't have to tell me. I already know. I see it in your eyes. Uh, that's how some of you come to church. That's how some of you are performing your duties in the church. Let me help you some. I didn't have to come to church today. I got to come to church today. When it becomes a drudgery serving the Lord, you're lukewarm. Hmm? Uh, when it's no longer delight that you get to do something for the Lord, who went to Calvary and paid your sin debt, uh, who came to you where you was, uh, showed you as a sinner. Uh, that night you called on him. Uh, he was faithful to save you, to change you, to put you in the family of God, uh, to seal you with the Spirit of God. Uh, hey, to make a new creature out of you, uh, to give you heaven as your home. Uh, that same God, uh, hey, he's been good to you. Uh, but when you're no longer delighted to serve him, you've gotten lukewarm. Can I say this? When entering the sanctuary no longer humbles you, you're lukewarm. Can I say, who are we to get to come to the Lord's table and worship him? We're old Gentile dogs. Uh, we was an afterthought, even though God's never had one. But in the Jews' mind, who are we? They're God's chosen people. By the way, you better be praying for Israel. I saw where an elementary school this past week had an assignment where all the kids had to write a paper on this thought. Do the Jews even deserve to be a country? I got news for that teacher. When God makes a new earth, the Jews are going to have it. Uh, they're still His chosen people. And they, they deserve a whole lot more than the dirt that they got over there, the desert they got over there as a country right now. They deserve all the Middle East. That's what God promised Abraham. And one day they're going to have it all. And God grafted a branch into the vine of Israel called the church and sent preachers out preaching the gospel. One day they'd come to where you was and you got born again. And then you got accepted in the beloved. You got to become part of the family of God and you got to become a part of the Lord's church when you was baptized into His church, became a member of His church. Can I say uh, membership in the Lord's church has its privileges. Uh, what a blessing to have this local church uh, on this little hill uh, right here outside of Burlington and Florence, Kentucky. Uh, hey, we've got a refuge we can come to, uh, an oasis uh, in this uh, hell hole of a life we're facing uh, where our country's going to hell, uh, where our schools are going to hell, uh, uh, where everybody around us that aren't saved is going to hell, uh, but we've got a place uh, where we can come uh, and we can worship Almighty God and God meets with His people. Uh, it ought to humble us that we get to come here. And when it doesn't humble you anymore, when you get to thinking you deserve to come, when you get to thinking that's your pew you're sitting on, when you get to thinking that uh, that's your money you're given, when you get to thinking that you have anything to do with it, you're lukewarm. Can I say you become lukewarm when the sermon sent from heaven no longer challenge you? Hmm? Can I say the man of God doesn't get up and just preach because he doesn't have nothing better to do? If I got to preach what I wanted to preach every week, I'd preach on heaven every week. I'd preach on heaven, I'd preach against Jehovah's Witnesses every week. That's what I'd do. Nah. The 
man of God. That's to spend time with God. And God breaks his heart for her thought from the pages of the scriptures. And many times he don't want to preach it. And I say many times he's guilty of it himself. Let's get right before he can preach it to you. But he's just not up popping off at his gums. Just has nothing better to do. He's gotten a word from the Lord. Just like John got this word from the Lord to give to Laodicea. And when it no longer challenges you, challenges you to be better, to do better, to strive more, to be more, then you've gotten lukewarm. If you can leave the house of God with a critical spirit, you didn't meet with God. If you can leave the house of God with complaint on your lips instead of praise, you didn't meet with God. You're lukewarm. Can I say this? You know you become lukewarm when being satisfied doesn't convict you. Their whole problem is they satisfied where they were. Can I say, I preach here three times a week when I'm in town, and when I'm not in town, I'm preaching usually four or five times. Can I say, most everywhere I go, Brother Ron, folks are satisfied where they're at. Very rarely, Brother Clint, are people sitting on the edge of their seat wanting more from God. Very rarely are people in the altar agonizing with God. I want more. When we become satisfied with where we're at, we're lukewarm. We know we're lukewarm. When the Spirit of God no longer stirs us. I'm going to be honest for God. There's been times I've sat in church. I didn't feel a thing. Wasn't God's fault. Wasn't the man of God's fault. Wasn't the singer's fault. It's because I was sitting there lukewarm. I was so full of me, the Spirit of God couldn't move in me. Oh, I know that's never happened to you. Uh, but when you get to the place when the Spirit of God doesn't stir you, you're lukewarm. Huh? I'm talking to born-again people. If you're not born again, uh, listen, the Spirit of God, if He starts dealing with you, you better get born again. But how? We expect sinners to come into an environment they're not comfortable with or they're not familiar with to sp sit there and hear what they need to do when Christians sit there and they don't do what they're supposed to do. Some of you, it's been so long since you've been broken in an altar, you need a GPS and the Holy Ghost to meet you there for it to ever happen. Hmm. Service after service after service, you're satisfied to sit where you sit. No brokenness. And when the Spirit of God doesn't stir you and break your heart, you're lukewarm. I don't care who you are, how tough you are. Sooner or later, the Spirit of God's going to break your heart. Ask Hensley there. He used to be as hard as, as it could. Him. Hard as rocks, hard as nails. Now all he does is cry. Why? There's been a change in his life. Somebody gets preaching on hell and that's where you deserve to go and you're not going. And you can see them tears welling up in his eyes. Yeah. What about you? Amen. Somewhere along the line. I'm not saying every service. But somewhere along the line, the Spirit of God gets a touch in your heart. You're going to move. And when you don't, because you're lukewarm. And I say, you know, you become lukewarm when the scriptures no longer enlighten you. When you can read the Bible, but you don't read the Bible. You're just reading words. 
When you open this book and you see God, something's happening in your soul. It's one of the office works of the Holy Ghost to bring us to, to the knowledge of truth and to enlighten the Word of God. How long has it been since you read the Bible and it jumped off the page at you? Might be you're just lukewarm. You become lukewarm when supplication becomes foreign to you. When you don't have time to pray, you're lukewarm. You got time to breathe, you got time to pray. And because God allowed you to breathe, you have reason to pray. But when we can be on our phones and do everything else in the world that we want to do, but we don't have time to pray, it's because we're lukewarm. You thought about this. You become lukewarm when the Savior's coming doesn't excite you. He's coming. He's taking His church out of this mess. You do realize one of the, one of the last straws One of the last hopes for mankind outside of Jesus Christ fell this past week, don't you? Our country was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. And our law was written from scholar and from scripture. And for a while, we've had liberal courts who have based judgments on the world court and not our own constitution. This past week, they thumbed their nose at the Constitution. They thumbed their nose at every man that's ever served and sworn oath to the Constitution. They thumbed their nose at every man that gave his life for the Constitution. Can I say, they thumbed their nose at every one of us that pledged allegiance to the flag and abide by the Constitution. They threw the Constitution out. And friend, I don't know anything else that's keeping Jesus from coming. The only thing I can say is the last one to get saved hadn't got saved yet. Say, are you Calvinist? Nope. But I know... There's going to be that final one gets in. The father's going to look at the son and say, go get your bride, and it's going to happen. Amen. And friends, everything as far as scripturally fulfilled has been fulfilled for Jesus to come Amen. and take his church out of here. My dear friends, if that doesn't excite you, uh, you know what excites me? I don't have to worry about four more years of mashed potato Biden. He ain't going to make it another four months, I don't think. Uh, and I don't have to worry about who goes into office because we may be in heaven. If that doesn't excite you, you might just be lukewarm. And can I say, I'm not talking about getting excited to go to heaven so you can be on streets of gold and walls of jasper. All, all that doesn't happen right at first. I'm talking about not being excited so all your problems go away. No, no, no. I'm talking about being excited because you get to see Him. Yeah. That doesn't excite you. It may just be lukewarm. What's the remedy? How do I get out of this lukewarm funk that I'm in? What's well, found also in Isaiah 55? Verse number 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. The Lord wouldn't give me this message had he not want you to come. Had he not been near, had he not been calling. Verse number 7 said, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. Did you notice? He's talking to his people. He said, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. You know what the solution is for lukewarmness? Come back to the Master. He'll rekindle a fire in your soul. 
get the water stirring again. Come back to the Lord and tell Him you're sorry you got to that lukewarm state and you don't ever want to go there again. Ask the Lord to have mercy on you. Ask the Lord to do something for you. Ask the Lord to revive you. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask the Lord to do a work in your heart. Ask the Lord to have mercy because He will abundantly pardon. But if you sit there and stay in your lukewarmness, all the preaching in the world won't help you because you're dependent on you and not Him. Today's a day of reckoning. Will we be zealous and repent? Or will we stay lukewarm? That's the message. What will you do with it as concerning yourself? Let's all stand. Folks are already coming. I don't want you to look to them. I don't want you to look to your right or your left. I want you to look within and ask the Lord, Lord, am I lukewarm? And then whatever He tells you, you respond. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Lord, I've tried my best give my heart give the message you birthed in my heart Lord forgive us for drifting and allowing lukewarm waters to fill our veins God I pray you'd break hearts now for righteousness sake I pray for those that Lord, I can feel it right now. are trying to tune out the Holy Ghost. God, I pray for strong Holy Ghost conviction. I pray, Father, your people would truly do business with you. God, I don't want to see you chasing any of your children. Lord, I want to see them all blessed and shouting the praise of God for your goodness. Now, God, speak in this invitation. Lord, many have come. Lord, revive them, restore them, refresh them. God, do something tremendous. Kindle a fire, Lord, that cannot easily be doused out. God, I pray, even in this message to the church, for strong Holy Ghost conviction that if anyone is amongst us unsaved, break their heart over their sin and help them to come and get born again. God bless now in this time of silence, in this time of invitation. May the Holy Ghost of God have His way. May folks not hesitate. May they be zealous and repent. And we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen.